don't know why, but it keeps coming back to me. This dream, every time I get frustrated, it comes back to me. It's a funeral. Grandfathers. We were all at the cemetery. All of my friends. My wife, my kids, my brothers, my sisters, my cousins, and even their kids. There were so many people there that I can't even say for sure who was a rel relative and who wasn't. You see, my folks started drifting apart, one after the other, after they all got married. Grandfather was very cross at first, you know, about the breaking up of the extended family. You see, our old house was so big, they could accommodate at least 50 people. But by the time he passed, there was only my family still living there. And the two workers who'd been with him for more than 50 years. Yeah. Funeral. You see, the coffin was so big, it was so big, that we had to hire 16 workers to carry it all the way from the funeral coach to the grave. But, but the problem was not so much the weight, although it was heavier, right? It was so damn heavy that the 16 of them nearly dropped it as they were getting it off the coach. And then three men from the family had to rush over to save it. Oi! Oi, gentle, okay! Gentle! That's my father's coffin! You don't want the coffin to crash, though. I'm sure you understand. What if the thing gets busted open right there, in front of all the people? I had a feeling that we're being watched. There were at least 200 of them there. I don't know who most of them were. But I just had this feeling though, that most of them didn't really belong to the family. Anyway, we saved the coffin from crashing down and prevented the thing from getting busted open right there. Then, the lot of us carried the damn thing to the grave. And as we were carrying it, we were cursing inside, you know. The grandfather had to get such heavy, solid thing. And why the damn workers were not strong enough to carry it. No wonder, you know. Most of them were just lazy bums out there to make a quick buck when a coffin needed carrying. I'm sure they didn't know that this was going to be a real heavy thing. But, but we were feeling proud. I mean, I did at least. How many people has a grandfather who has the honor of getting buried in such a rare, refined, solid, polished, grand old thing? Yeah, I'm sure many had heard, heard about the specialness of the coffin and had come to see just that. Yeah, I remember they were carrying candles. Yeah. They were clicking away, or we were biting our damn lips, trying to get the thing off the ground. But, as I said, the problem was not so much the weight. It was the size. It was big, unusually big. We knew that all along. But, but we never knew that it'd be so big that it won't even get into the hole. Yeah. Yeah, can you imagine? Can you imagine that your grandfather's coffin won't fit into the hole, especially dug for him on the day of his funeral? And, and in front of 200 people, We were literally stunned. We just stood there and looked at each other. Nobody said a word. 
must have been the funniest thing that has ever happened in the entire funeral history of mankind. money and energy and emotions into a grand old funeral that 200 people show up for. What happened? The coffins won't get into the hole because the hole is too small. Or the coffin is too big. I mean, it didn't fit, did it? It didn't fit. So, we just stood there, and we looked at each other. All the crying suddenly stopped. But no one dared to laugh. Mind you, if you are a member of the family, how can you laugh? I mean, if this was your father, your grandfather, or your granduncle getting buried, and, and their body won't fit into the grave, what can you do about it? You take him out and you bury him into the hole without the coffin. Or you bring him back with the coffin, but you bury him in some other cemetery. Or, or do you come back another day when the hole is made bigger? You see, it's serious. You can't laugh. You just can't. It felt more like crying. You see, I'm the eldest grandson. And I was in charge there, since my father and his brothers had all passed before my grandfather. You see, I was the head of the family. How can I cry? I had to do something. So, I called over the funeral parlor man. I lost my money. $500. Hey, wait, my client calling me. Hello, sir? Hello? Yeah? How come the hole is so small? Uh, no, sir, no, sir. Uh, the hole is not too small. Uh. Uh, the coffin is too big. Uh. My God! I was furious! I mean, what the hell, man? This was serious business. My grandfather was lying there in the coffin, unable to get into his grave, and this Damn funeral man wants to talk relativity. I mean, whether the coffin was too small or the hole was too big, what difference does it make, right? It didn't fit, did it? And that's a problem, wasn't it? I tell you, I was so angry. I just wanted to boil. But, but there were so many people. And they were all watching me, waiting for me to make a decision. So, I said quiet and politely. Okay, never mind which is too big. The thing is, the coffin cannot get into the grave. Now tell me, why didn't you measure? But sir, this is standard size. Eh? Uh, we didn't know your grandfather had such a big coffin until this day. Uh, to tell you the truth, I have never seen such a big grand coffin before myself. But I believe I- Okay, stop. I stopped him. I think he was going to tell me that his father had managed such big coffins before his time. But I stopped him. I said, okay, never mind. Hurry up and dig the hole bigger. He felt silent and looked very surprised. He looked at me for a moment and then at the coffin. Then at the hole. 
then at me again and said, uh, I must take, it can't be done. Sir. What do you mean it can't be done? You mean you won't take? Uh, no, sir, no, sir. Um, but I don't think the plot is so big and why is to get the company. You see, uh, the walls of the next plot might collapse. You see, sir, you need to work according to a third size. Uh. All right, then. Get another plot. Don't solve the problem, wouldn't it? I was deaf that thought. I was able to solve a nasty problem right there, in my deepest moment. But I was wrong. I'm afraid you can't, uh, sir. You see, uh, regulations say one day allocator, one plot. How can you have two graves or one day? Who said anything about two graves? One man, one body. One coffin, one grave, only double the size. But that's exactly what I mean. Um, see, not a lot. Uh, you look at all the other graves. Oh see, all same size. No two graves or one coffin. Everyone's standard size. What are we gonna do with that? I began to feel desperate. Oh, sir, I know I'm changed it to us. Smaller coffin. Uh, we have a wide range of coffins available. We have very big ones, uh, although not so big as this one, but we should fit the smaller standard of size. Uh. Oh, we even have oh, some very good table ones. Oh, okay, very... wait, wait, wait. I stopped him before he could go any further. Can you imagine the embarrassment? The whole of our extended family, stranded at the cemetery, with grandfather's coffin sitting beside us, listening. This funeral parlor man deliver a range of promotions on his coffin. I stopped him. I said, Okay, wait, I've got my coffin. All I want now is an extra plot of land. Can you understand that? But that's impossible, as I've been trying to tell you. See for yourself, sir. Um, rows upon rows upon rows of graves are as far as your eyes can reach. Do you see any one of them sitting on two floors? Sir, you must understand there is no room for exceptions, ah. Uh. It's quite clear that this young funeral man was added to its end. But was it going to be mine too? For a moment I thought it was. And I began to sweat. But right there, in my moment of crisis, the sight of grandfather's coffin became a source of strength and inspiration. As I looked at it, I felt as if it was speaking to me, persuading me not to give it up. Not to give up the grand old thing. Immediately, my mind was made up, <coughs> and I resumed my confident self once again. <coughs> Come, I'm a sea officer in charge. But I already... Um, let's go. Right now. Okay, But before we drove off, I turned to the audience and I offered my apologies. I said, Dear ladies and gentlemen, relatives and friends, we apologize for the delay in funeral proceedings due to a small technical fault. We hope to resume service as soon as possible. And I apologize for any inconvenience. In the meantime, the band will entertain you with a few numbers and, and I hope to be back as soon as possible. Thank you. that my decision was made too hasty because when I got to the office I found everyone staring at me wide-eyed it was only then 
that I realized I was still wearing my full set of hero costumes. But so be it, right? Since I'm here, I might as well get on with it. After all, my poor old man is still lying in his coffin, unable to get into his grave. But to be polite, I stayed outside and asked the funeral man to go in and talk to the officer. I decided that I should not show my usual disposition unless it became absolutely necessary. Unfortunately, he got into trouble the moment he stepped into the room. You see, the office was not entirely soundproof, so I heard most of the conversation, especially the officer's heart scolding.
Well, this officer sounds okay. She sounds sympathetic already. <laughs> Humane and sympathetic. So I butted it and said, Well, yes, ma'am. As you know, the coffin is already by the grave. And we can't very well change the place or alter the burial. So now I think the only option is for you to give us another one. No, 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 no. That will be running against our national planning. We're well aware of the fact that Singapore is a densely populated nation with limited land resources. The consideration for humanity and sympathy cannot overstep the constraints of the state policy. Well, I can't say anything against that. But what about my grandfather? Constraint or not, the old man's coffin still has to have a hole big enough for him to get into. Doesn't he? I was feeling anxious about my grandfather's coffin. But before I could get to opening my mouth again, the stern look on the officer's face soon changed to a near smile. Her sparkle appeared in her eyes as she went on to say, But wait, I think there could be a compromise. Her prayer softening attitude prompted a surprising look on the funeral man. It would be nice if a little one is buried next to your grandfather's funeral. So for you people to dip off the wall and lift the collapse in the next wall, I would allow you two families to make a big common grave. Put your grandfather and the little one's coffins in together. drawing off rectangles for your parking lot. Let me remind you that there are 200 people standing and waiting at the cemetery because my grandfather can't get into his home because the home is too small. And if you don't give me another plot of land so that I can give him a decent burial, I'll, I'll, I'll get the entire family to camp right there overnight in the cemetery. Bury my grandfather 
more decent life. And so while I'm at it, shouldn't I just do it right and proper? If not, how am I going to face my ancestors when my day of reckoning comes? So I kept firm and I stood by God. It took the officer quite a while to return to me. And the face seemed even longer. She walked into her room again. <coughs> All right. Since already the cemetery, and since the coffin has proven itself too big for the hole. was finally put to rest at home. It truly was a very special burial. Because of the extra size of his coffin, while everyone else slept north-south, he slept east to west. In the end, it was a solemn, colorful, grand burial. By the time I got back to the cemetery, the crowd had gone from 200 people to over 800. Every single radio station, news agency, and TV outlet had arrived. In the end, it was even voted one of the top 10 national news of the year. It made headlines all over the world. But, all the same, the presence of the crowd and the media 
when we worried for a while. Because, because I feared that the officer in charge might think that it was I who had called him over. And since she had given me an extra block, she might blame me for giving the state so much like, extra publicity. But in the end, my mind was put at rest when she was awarded a prize in recognition of the exceptional humanity and sympathy she had shown my grandfather's coffee. In the end, she was voted most humane personality of the year. stuck in my mind. And it often come back to me as a dream. Especially when I'm frustrated. You see, what happened to my grandfather's coffin? I'll be worried about choosing my own coffin. I'm sure you'll agree with me that Grandfather's Coffin had its own special charm and unique charisma. The problem is that it's too big for the world. And now, to be pragmatic, it appears I have to get a standard sized coffin as well. Whenever I get to the cemetery and I see those rows upon rows upon rows of standard sized graves, I, I can't help but think about my own fate. This is what really bothers me. Now, with all of them the same size and the same shape, I think about my sons and daughters, and their grandsons and granddaughters after. Will they be able to pick me up and recognize me? I don't know. I don't know. Thank <laughs> you.